this is unit seven. Um, we're talking about the concept and the forms of the second aorist. So all the aorists that we've learned so far are the SA aorists, okay, in which that sequence SA is the sign of the aorist as we've talked about it. That SA is there in all the forms except the third person singular of the active aorist where it becomes you lose the A in favor of the E, that's the sign of the third person. But everywhere that's the sign. You take the stem of the present, like Luo, and you add your S A and you have your aorist endings. Okay, and we, we just saw we just formed aorist middles out of them and everything else. Um, but it turns out that there's an older form of the aorist, um, which the book calls the second aorist. Actually, Historically, it should be the first aorist. That's why we put scare quotes, quotes around second. Okay, it's just older. Um, it doesn't mean anything different. It's just an aorist. But certain verbs have an older form of the aorist than the SA, which is the newer one. Mm -hmm. So it's like the, the verbs, the strong verbs in English, the verbs that are like get, in which the past is got in which you change the E vowel to an O vowel, or C and saw, or write and wrote, and stuff like that. So it's the so-called strong verbs. And then there are the huge majority of other verbs, like computerize, where you make the past by not changing anything, any vowels or anything, but adding a D, like I computerize, I computerized, stuff like that. So there are the, the computerized verbs are regular, the get verbs are so-called irregular, they're just older and they obey old rules. So these are as many older categories that are in language. They're either in very common words or in very rare ones, okay? Um, and um, the book starts out slowly by teaching you one such verb, and that verb is the verb lepo. Um, we put the first three principal parts on the left-hand side of the blackboard that Belisi has uh, of the verb lepo, which means leave or abandon in the active voice. And what we're going to look at uh, uh, in the video here is the active forms. The, the middle uh, forms of this second aorist are easy, and we want you to look at them in the book instead of taking up your time with a video about them. But if you notice, the first principal part, the present, in other words, is lepo, and the root is lape, just like any other verb. The future is lepso, in which you add the s to make the future, okay? And there, there's nothing different about those forms from luo and paideo and bempo and so forth. But the aorist is different. It's e, you've got your augment, and then lip instead of lape, okay? What's happened is the e has disappeared, and you just have lip, and then on, no s a. Now, you recognize that on ending, don't you? It's the on ending of the imperfect active indicative. So lu on is I was releasing. If you look at the endings on the right there, it's on s e amen et on. Those are all the endings of the imperfect. So you've got the thematic vowel alternation o e e o e o, and then the past endings that you see in the imperfect indicative. Um, what's funny? What difference? What's what differentiates this form from the present? is the fact that you've dropped the E vowel. So it's just like get and got or write and wrote. You change the vowel in the stem, it changes the tense of the verb. For us in English, in Greek, it changes the aspect. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's the sign of the aorist active indicative, that you've got lip as the stem. And it has endings that are that don't have the SA anymore, right? Um, so there is a, you can see the difference between elepon and elepon. One's I was left leaving, and the other is I left, okay? Um, if, we, if we go to the next blackboard and look at the forms of the subjunctive and of the optative, uh, these are, again, only active forms. You could look at the middle forms yourselves. Um, there's what you would expect. You start with the form lip, okay? Um, and then you add the endings of the subjunctive, which are the ones with the long thematic vowel, O, S, A, Omen eta osi. Um, in the optative, you remember the optative in the optative the thematic vowel is always o, so you've got lip plus o, plus the iota, that's the sign of the optative, yeah. plus the same uh, endings as you have in the active optative um, present.
So lay point there would be the active present optative, and lit point there is going to be the aorist one. So these forms are the same as the as the present forms, except for the change in the stem vowel. Okay. So there are various kinds of second aorists. We'll learn more examples of it, but for the moment we've only got one, um, and they all obey this pattern. That is, they in the aorist indicative they look like they have the endings of the imperfect, but a change in the stem. In the subjunctive and the optative, you have that same stem lip in this case, and you add the endings uh, uh, of the subjunctive and the optative as usual. Notice there is one funny thing about the second aorist infinitive. The ending is EIN, lip pain, what you would expect for a thematic form like this, but its accent is weird. Okay, it has non recessive accent on the last syllable. It's effectively, it's really what's being accented is the thematic vowel itself. We'll see more about this uh, la later on, but that's the way. Um, it works, okay? Um, so check out the forms of the of the second aorist middle, uh, the second aorist middle, um, in the subjunctive and in the optative and the indicative. I don't think you're going to be surprised. I think you'll be able to identify them when you see them. But look at them in the book. Okay.